Sorry, look, I have this little pooch. Yeah. <sighs> Somebody really wants to hang out too. Yeah. You wanna hang out? You wanna hang out? <laughs> Is she gonna let me do this? I don't know. Okay. Let's go out in a little bit. Okay. Hi, I'm Erin, Erin Lucy, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a really super delayed, I know it's already mid-February, but a delayed reading goals and share my to be read. TBR list. So, yeah. So I'm going to start off with some goals. I just said... <laughs> He's all, you made so noisy. Okay. Back to it. Um, so the first goal is to read at least five books by authors from countries that I've never read um, any books. Um, from before. So this is definitely partly inspired by Emma, who's another booktuber who I really love. She has some great videos and I will link her channel below, but she does this kind of around the world challenge and I thought that was really cool to kind of seek out books from other countries. And she has found a lot that I have added to my TBR as well, so definitely should make it a little easier, but yeah, I'm really excited about that one. And I realized in January, I did not read any. So already off to not a great start with this one, but I just wanted to be very intentional about it. So yeah. The next goal is to read at least three books by indigenous authors. And that also just to do with perspective, kind of gaining different perspective. I've also not seen a whole lot, especially in mainstream media by authors um, from indigenous cultures. And so I feel like it's just a really important voice and part of history. So I'd like to intentionally read some more um, authors that are indigenous. And I do have some actually on my TBR already, but I also realized I haven't read many from this perspective before. I think the only one I can think of in the past two years was There There by Tommy Orange, which was fantastic. But yeah, I wanted to seek them out more specifically. Just generally, um, especially in terms of author, I want to be able to look at the past year, so 2022, and feel good about um, my reading in terms of diverse perspectives and like a range of genre and topic. Um, so yeah, so it's not a very specific goal, but I wasn't really sure how to make this one into something more concrete. And I do really enjoy looking at my statistics for reading for the, like, the previous years. So I think just kind of looking back on it and looking at the breakdown of um, where authors are from and their backgrounds and just feeling good about like having a very diverse um, reading repertoire from the last year, so. And then the last goal I have for this year is to read more nonfiction. I think I mentioned this in my intro newbie tag video but yeah I'm a, I'm a scientist and I would really like to read more science book and work on my own science communication so I hope to do a little of that on here but also just generally for the books that I read this year I want to read at least one nonfiction a month and I say at least because ideally I'd read to, like to read more than that but I want to make it very manageable I've already found the book that I'm reading this month is very dense so yeah, more nonfiction though. I just, I love to learn and I hope to learn about a lot more topics, both science and not. The one I read in January was Call Us What We Carry by Amanda Gorman. So yeah, I really loved it. It was five stars right off the bat, but sorry, my dog is whining at me to take her on a walk. Okay, so those are my goals that I really wanna focus on in terms of reading this year. And now I'm going to talk about my TBR and actually I refilmed this intro bit so I'm really hoping it's not too different from the TBR. I just had some things I wanted to add to the goals. I felt like when I first filmed this they were a little too vague and so I just wanted to put some specifics in there because I am definitely very goal oriented and it helps me to have something concrete to work towards. So yeah I refilmed it so I'm so sorry if there's any lighting changes, so. 
here we go. So now I will get into my TBR. The first one is The Poppy War, which is a military fantasy story with some 20th century Chinese history mixed in there, is what I have heard. It's about Ren, who was orphaned in a war, and she gets into this elite military academy. It follows her struggles and the challenges that um, she experiences in the academy. So yeah, sounds like it has a lot of really cool fantasy aspects and history. Okay, so the next one is Breasts and Eggs by Miyako Kawakami. And this one is about three women, Makiko and then her daughter and her younger sister. Makiko and her daughter travel to Tokyo so she can find an, an affordable breast implant surgery. And it sounds kind of like a strange beginning, but I think it has a lot to do with women in society and the fears and frustrations and impressions that women face. So I actually found out about this one because after I read After Dark by Haruki Murakami, I did some research into Murakami and there are there is a lot of controversy around his female characters. I haven't experienced anything in the books that I've read of his that I've felt super uncomfortable with yet, but it is a really good discussion to have and I found this article where Kawakami interviews Haruki Murakami. Um, and it was a really interesting in interview, very interesting take especially on female characters. I'm gonna link that below. Um, but it, that's how I found out about this book and got really excited to read her work. She has another book called Heaven that I would also really like to get to. The next is Dawn by Octavia Butler, whom I love. I really love The Parable of the Sower, which I read a few years ago and ever since have been really intrigued by Octavia Butler's work. So very excited to read another one, Dawn. And this one is about Lilith who wakes up in a spaceship surrounded by aliens, I think. And it's years after a nuclear war on Earth. So should be a very fun sci-fi read. Yeah. The next is The Three Body Problem by Sashin Leo Lu. Trying to pronounce that right. So this one I think is a relatively well-known sci-fi that I only just heard about a few months ago from my friend who recommended it. And it's supposed to be about um it's supposed to be like a really incredible sci-fi with aspects of philosophy, physics, um, Chinese history around the cultural revolution. So Definitely really excited to get to this one. I'm realizing I have quite a lot of like sci-fi and fantasy on my TBR <laughs> for this year. We have Notes from the Burning Age by Claire North, which I don't know a whole lot about. It came out last year. I haven't seen a lot about it, but I picked it up in a bookstore last year. It just sounded really interesting. There's like climate disaster a keeper of ancient archives. So sounds kind of right up my alley. I'm very excited to get to it as well. All right, this last one for fiction is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Agawa. This is the same author as The Memory Police. I really love that book, um, especially the writing. So I'm really excited to pick up another one of hers. It's an older book, I think. It was published in the early 2000s. So it's been out for a while and I know a lot of people have read this and loved it. My friend just the other day was saying how much she loved it. So I'm very excited to read it. It's about a math professor who only remembers things for like eight minutes and his relationship with the person who's his caretaker. I've heard good things and it's really short. So definitely doable and excited to read this year. Okay, the last Three on my physical TBR are nonfiction that I'm hoping to read that are kind of sciencey 
um, and do some of these like reading science vlogs like I did with Kindred last week. So this is probably the one that I'm looking forward to the most of all these books and that is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And she spoke at my university a few years ago and I just loved her. She was really awesome and it got me really excited to read her book. And it's kind of this intersection of um, ecology and plants and animals from a perspective that is um, indigenous, but also a scientific perspective. So I've heard really amazing things about it and I am, this is like top of my TBR right now. The next one is The Gene. And this one is about genetics, history of genetics and their influence on our lives. And I've actually had this one for a number of years sitting on my shelf and I'm finally putting it on my TBR for like this year. I'm gonna read it. Um, it's actually the same author as The Emperor of All Maladies, which is about cancer, which is another one that I really hope to get to. I've read snippets from it, but it'd be really great to do a full read through of that as well. So. Okay, the last one is another nonfiction, uh, Other Minds which is about intelligence and how we often associate intelligence with humans, but I think this focuses more on in intelligence in other animals, particularly octopus. Um, so yeah, it sounds really intriguing and interesting, so I'm hoping to get to that one as well. So last, but definitely not least, are new releases for 2022. And there were a couple that I was looking forward to that have already come out and I've already read them, so I'm not gonna include them in this video. But I'll start with one that has come out technically today, yesterday, right around now, right around now. <laughs> um, and that is second in the Crescent City series, House of Breath and Sky by Sarah J. Mass. Yep, last year definitely got into Sarah J. Mass. Uh, I read A Court of Thorns and Roses series and then Crescent City, which I ended up, or House of Earth and Blood was the first one, I think. And I really loved it. The protagonist is a little bit older for that genre. I think she starts out as 23. Still really young, but it kind of felt like a little bit more fresh. She had a little bit more experience, was like working this job. Um, but yeah, she had just a little bit more experience. It felt like a little more fresh. There were so many magical, different kinds of magical beings um, and powers. I just thought it was really an awesome book. I got through it really quick, despite being an 800 page or more book. It actually was really quick to read. So interesting. Even there's, okay, so there's something that happens in the first the like very beginning of this book, the first one, and it's what sends her on this journey. I don't, even though it's like the very beginning, I don't want to spoil that because I actually really did not expect it. And it kind of added to it, but definitely ripped my heart out too. So a little bit, a little bit of a warning there, but the second one comes out, I'm very excited. Yes, Bryce and Hunt, Athelar team up and go on this like kind of journey for justice throughout this romance fantasy adventure, kind of. Okay, the next two both come out May 3rd of this year. And the first is Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I've also seen that everywhere. I'm very excited to read it. If you like romance and have not read Emily Henry, definitely check out her other books. I read Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation last year love them both. I'm not like a huge romance, like I do like some of them, but I'm not huge into romance and really loved her writing. So definitely gonna read Book Lovers when that comes out. That is about Nora, who is a literary agent, and Charlie, I think, is a editor. The other one that comes out on May 3rd is Book of Night by Holly Black. Love Holly Black, The Cruel Prince, Folk of the Air series was fantastic and Holly Black contributed to the Spiderwork Chronicles which was one of my favorites as a kid so really excited for this book it's her kind of highly anticipated adult fantasy okay the final one I have on my list is the final gambit which is out August 30th and this is the third in the inheritance games 
Hawthorne Legacy trilogy and it's kind of a mystery trilogy. In the very first one, this girl Avery um, is left a lot of money in the will of this like billionaire. She doesn't know him at all, so it's this whole mystery that was really has been really interesting. I love the first one. The second one didn't love as much, so I'm really hoping the third brings it all together. So yeah, the final gambit. I'm sure there's plenty more that I'll find out about um, throughout this year, but those are just some of the ones that I'm looking forward to this year. And I would love to know if there's other ones you think I should read or that you're really looking forward to coming out this year. So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.